So the man goes down the road. He gets beat up, and he's lying on the side of the road. Now, I find it interesting that right away then, the, 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 the usual interpretation of this passage is we flip it, and then the person who's in now takes control, the Samaritan. Now we want to read ourselves into him, right? Because he's the one who can help, and we want to be the people who can help, because being helped requires vulnerability. And being helped also requires that the power structures change. If we can always be the ones to help, if a doctor or a lawyer or a counselor or a psychologist or a social worker can always be the one to help, then the relationship that you have with somebody that you're helping is always predicated on the fact that that person won't get any better. Does that make sense? You as a social worker can only have a relationship with the family that you're in their life as long as they need you. And so we have relationships that are formed on power disparity. I have something that you need rather than relationships that are formed on mutuality, rather than relationships that are formed on interdependence, rather than relationships that are formed on vulnerability. And so as we come to this passage this week, it's interesting that we want to read ourselves in the position of the Samaritan, but I would suggest to you that what Jesus is doing to this man is he's saying that if you're hearing this passage, whether you're white, black, Asian, Latino, male, female, Indian, whoever you are, if you are hearing this passage, I would submit to you that if you are coming primarily to the gospel asking how you can benefit others, that Jesus would say to you today, first, see yourself broken, hurting, and lying on the side of the road with no one to help. First, see yourself in that place. Because it may just be that the only way we as the body of Christ are gonna find healing is when those least like us speak to us who we are and we allow others to heal our wounds. Now, whether you're from the historic, traditional African-American church or from the white church or whatever, we can all fall into these paternalistic ways of interacting with others. We can all fall into these ways of thinking that we know better than other people about the healing that they need. And what I would submit to you today is that the reason we need each other, the reason we need the body of Christ is because we need those with different perspectives and different backgrounds than us to offer us healing. I need you, you need me. And that our experience of Jesus Christ is limited to the extent that our communities are homogenous. Paul uses the same logic in Corinth, in, to the church in Corinth, right? He says, if everyone was a hand, where would the body be? In other words, we're all parts of a body, but a whole bunch of hands gathered together and a whole bunch of feet gathered together, all in our separate churches, actually looks more like a dismembered corpse than it does a living, active body. The only way the body can function is when there's a diversity of parts present. So what I would submit to you today is that this passage, Jesus is turning on our heads our thoughts of what social justice means. Listen to what he says to the man. He says, which one of these three proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? Now listen to the syntax here because I think the syntax bears up my interpretation of this. I didn't get this from a commentary. So some of you in the biblical studies department, you can go out and you can say, he was full of hogwash. That's fine. But I think the syntax bears this out because it says here in this passage in verse 36, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man? And what had the man said earlier? The man had said, and who is my neighbor? Listen to that. The man, who is my neighbor? The neighbor is the other. And Jesus says, which proved to be a neighbor to the man? You see what I'm saying? And then listen what Jesus says. He says, you go and do likewise. And we always hear that you go and do like the Samaritan. But there was only one guy in the passage who the word go in the Greek ever referred to before this. And that was the man who was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. 
And so I would propose to you that Jesus is saying, if we are desiring to figure out how to live out a holistic gospel that doesn't just address the spiritual, but addresses the physical, it addresses justice issues, it does all of that, that Jesus would say, you go and allow your brokenness and your wounds to be apparent to others, allow your vulnerability to show to others, and allow others to touch you where you hurt to give you the healing that you need. Because what do you have to bring to anyone else but your own broken self? 